Hi, in this particular uh, chapter, we'll talk about the internal HTTPS load balancer. So this particular load balancer distributes HTTP and HTTPS traffic to backends that could include Compute Engine or, or GKE Engine. So the load balancer here is only accessible in the chosen area of your virtual private cloud network on an internal IP address. So let's assume that you are a client that wants to connect to an internal load balancer. Now this particular client has to be in the same region as a load balancer is so for example you have a client here and this client as long as it is within the same US central region can communicate with the load balancer now since it's a layer 7 load balancer what we'll be doing in this example would be we'll be creating a front end and we'll be connecting it to multiple backends so we'll have two backends and it will be a path based backend routing and another thing that we'll do is we'll also create a cloud DNS entry And this particular host would be able to communicate with these backends using a domain rather than an IP address. So let's see how this is done. So let's go ahead and let's create our first internal HTTPS load balancer. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to create two instance groups. Now I've already created two instance groups. Now this is basically the same instance group that I had reused in a previous chapter. So again, the link to that particular chapter I'll give over here. So you can just check that out. So once you've created these two instance groups, Again, this, these instance groups just have an Apache web server running on it and nothing else. So let's look at one of these instance groups and let's see what the output it gives is. So if you open the external IP address, you can see that it just gives or returns the instance name for that particular instance. So the instance name is this and that is all that it displays as the output. So once you've got two of these instance groups, the next thing that we'll do is we'll create a internal HTTP load balancer. Let's go to our load balancer. And let's create an internal load balancer. So again, we'll start off with start configuration. It's going to be an HTTP. And this time the only difference is instead of from the internet, it's basically only between my VMs. And let's click on continue. And here you need to give the network and the region. So the network is again going to be default. And let's give a name for our load balancer. Let's just call this as a load balancer, internal load balancer. And here you also need to reserve a subnet for your internal load balancer. Now to get more information, I will give you a link as to why you to need to do this. So let's click on reserve subnet and let's reserve a subnet for our load balancer. So here you can give a subnet range. So I've given this particular subnet range and now let's click on add. Okay, now let's go to a backend configuration and let's create those two backend services. Let's click on create a backend service. Again, I'll be using those two instance groups that I had created previously. So let's click on instance group one. And let's give a name for this backend service. Let's just call this as backend one. Click on create. And you also need to give the health check. So let's do that as well. Create a health check. And the port number should be 80 because we're running a web server. Let's click on create. And similarly, let's create backend for two. And this is again going to be an instance group. And the only difference here is basically we'll be using the second instance group. And again, the port number would be the same. And let's use the same health check. Let's click on create health check. Click on save. And let's create this health check as well. So we've created two backend services. So now let's go and do the routing. Let's go to the routing rules. And what we'll do here is basically we will create a route for both the paths. So basically the example that the host that I would be using would be uh, you can use any host because we are going to run it on the uh, internal or the private DNS. So let's just give the host as a example.com itself. And the path would be path1. And this is again going to run backend1. And let's give example.com for path2. For this particular path, let's give the backend service two. So we've created two routing rules. So again, the default would be backend one. And if the path is path one, it's again going to go to backend one. And if it's path two, then it's going to go to backend two. So after we've done this, let's go to the front end. And you don't need to do anything in the front end. So let's just leave everything as it is. And let's click on create. 
Oh, you need to give the subnet here as well. So let's click on the subnet and let's click on create. So once we've created the internal HTTP load balancer, we'll get the IP address, which we'll use in creating our cloud DNS. So let's go to our internal load balancer and let's get the IP address. So this is the IP address that we need. So let's copy this and let's click on cloud DNS now. So what we need to do is we need to create a zone. Let's click on create zone. And this is going to be of type private because we want to run it internally just within our network. So let's give a name. So let's just call this as uh, private DNS. And here we need to give the DNS name. So again, this is going to be example.com. And it's going to be type default. And we need to mention the uh, network. So this is the default network again, that is going to run our private DNS. So that's about it. Let's click on create now. So after you created your private DNS, you need to add a record set. Let's click on add a record set. And here you just need to paste your particular IP address of the load balancer. And that's about it. So let's click on create. Okay, so we've set up our DNS. Now what we'll do finally is we'll create a virtual machine within that same region and we'll try to access the load balancers IP address through the domain. So let's go and create a new instance. So this new instance is basically our client and it's through this client that will be accessing the load balancer and you have to make sure that it's within the same region. So I have already got an instance created. So we'll be using this particular instance. So let's SSH into this particular instance. Okay, so I've logged into my client virtual machine and let's try to do a curl on example.com. So if I do a curl on example.com, you can see that it redirects me to this particular instance. Now this particular instance belongs to instance group one. And similarly, if we do a curl based on our path, so we had two paths, the first one was path one. And within path one, I put an index.html file as well. Let's see what it gives now. And it gives the same path because the path one, again, we had set to our backend service one. And that backend service one has instance group one. So this is fine as well. And let's finally do the path two as well. And you can see that the path two redirects me to the instance group two, which is basically connected to the backend service two. So once again, let's revisit what we had done. We had created an internal load balancer within our US central one, and we had connected it to two backend services. And both these two backend services had two distinct paths. The first one had path one, and the second one had path two. So after we created this load balancer, the IP address of this particular load balancer, we gave it to a cloud DNS. So within cloud DNS, we were, we registered a private zone and this particular private zone had example.com as the domain. So after this, the next thing that we did was we created a virtual machine and using the example.com domain, we were able to connect to this particular load balancer. So I hope this was useful. If you have any doubts, get in touch with me. And again, the code for the a virtual machine I will give in the description below so you can just go check that out. So that's it for this one. I will see you in the next.